Well, after a church service on Sunday morning, a young girl suddenly announced to his mother, Mom, I, to her mother, Mom, I decided to become a pastor when I grow up. That's okay with us, but what made you decide that? Well, said the little girl, I have to go to church on Sunday anyway, and I figure it will be more fun to stand up and yell than to sit down and listen. <laughs> I won't be uh, standing up here and yelling, but, and I'll still try to listen. Maybe this girl was on her way to becoming a saint. What makes a saint? Saintliness means conveying God's love to all people, which you do. A saint is one who displays goodness and tries to live according to Jesus' commandments, which you do. The saint is kind and forgiving, charitable, always living for others, always doing for others, which you do. What makes a saint? One day, a man was walking through a beautiful church building, much like this, with his four-year-old son. And as they walked, the young boy looked around, and he stopped. And he was curious about the stained glass windows that looked so beautiful with their bright colors. And as he looked at the windows, he asked, who are all the people in these windows, Daddy? Well, they are saints, said the father. What are saints, Daddy? The kid asked. And the father was struck. How was he going to explain who saints were to a four-year-old boy? As the boy was still looking up at the windows, and the father was still wondering how he would explain who saints are. The young boy suddenly shouted out, I know who saints are, Daddy. They are the people that the light shines through. <laughs> Haven't we heard revelations like that from the children in our church? You, the people of East Weymouth Congregational Church, you let the light shine through. You all love, like I do, the way the light shines through our beautiful windows. It's a numinous thing to see the colors from our resurrection window fall on people in different pews at different times. And in the afternoon, when we have dancers up here, or we have different performers, the brass, the orchestra, we watch with marvel, those of us who know how the light shines, we watch the colors from those lights fall upon those dancers and performers. We watch the colors of light shine on as they share their talents. I love to watch the light shine as it falls upon the children when they come up here to help lead worship. A favorite memory in recent years is when Norm got up on that ladder. How many memories do we have of Norm in his 80s up on that ladder? And he tried to, to shine a light on our angel window so that when it's dark outside, the people of Jackson Square can see the angel and the light shining through the darkness. And this was not an easy task, so eventually Lee got very involved and Bob helped as well. Um, and she stepped up that ladder too, and you can see that light there, that light right above the, the angel. And it shines every night on a timer. And I tell our neighbor Dolly across the street at her boutique, I tell her that that angel shines upon her. And I tell people every time I see them walking in the night around here that that angel shines upon them. It's a luminous angel. And what I'm realizing now, however, is that the shining for our community doesn't stop there. You are like these angels. You shine when you're in the sanctuary, when you go out into the square or beyond, on behalf of the church, God's light is shining through you. You bring rays of hope and love and light, and you break the spirit just by being you, who you've been formed to be. I got it, I got it, okay. 
When you think of saints, there comes to mind a picture of a person in ancient costume with a halo around their head. But that's not exactly correct either, right? The Bible teaches that all who trust in Jesus and try to do his work on earth are saints. Now all the words in both Greek and Hebrew that are used in the Bible and are translated into the word saint, they all have the same definition. According to the Bible, a saint is someone who is holy and dedicated. And that comes through in all the different translations. But the word holy doesn't mean perfect. It means set apart. Holy means set apart. In the New Testament, a saint is simply a follower of Jesus Christ. And the people described as saints in scripture were very much human. They were called, they were holy, they were very dedicated, both in terms of their attitude and being set apart to do God's great work. But they were still real people, far from perfect. They were fishermen and farmers and tent makers and widows, teachers, children, carpenters, uh, former prostitutes, extortionists, outcasts, robbers, you name it. They weren't infallible. Sometimes they disagree with one another. We never do that here, right? <laughs> as far as the Bible is concerned, Jesus is perfect, but Jesus' people were and are not perfect. Just think of the mistakes the Apostle Peter made or Paul. But they learned as they went. They learned from their mistakes. We do that too, and we love each other through it. The disciples were set apart to serve God on a journey, the journey of following Jesus, the journey of learning to be more and more like Jesus. And so what is a saint? It means becoming more and more loving and less and less judgmental, more and more accepting of others, and less and less condemning of others. We've done that here. We've done that work here with Reverend Hattie and Reverend Don and Reverend Paul and all of you. We grew painfully but spiritually through conflict. And conflict comes again. It's just the way we are as human beings. We make a mistake, but in this church, we love our way through it. We've been on a journey of learning more like Jesus. And we will continue to be on that journey because Jesus is not going anywhere. Jesus will always be with you. You will continue to grow as saints with a new pastor, but also with the same wonderful conference of the Southern Region, the Southern New England Conference, the United Church of Christ. I'm grateful that you have let me journey with you for nine years. It truly has been a privilege to bear witness with you that we are a church of miracles. Is that right? Yep. We see miracles happen all the time here. We are the little church that could. I love how some of you said, we are small, but we are mighty, mighty people of faith. What is a saint? I have seen you learning to become more and more like Jesus. Here are some moments when I see the light shine through you, like through these windows, as saints in progress. When you were loading up garbage bags that kept getting bigger and bigger in the conference room for Martin Luther King Day Jr. service, full of clothes to give to refugee children, when you walked across the Four River Bridge, hanging onto our church banner as the cold wind whipped through us, singing no regret, because you care about our climate, you leave this building to show others that you care about the safety and health of the people living in the incineration zone. You care about our planet. 
When you sing in the choir with such love on your faces and sincerity, I see that you mean every single word about God's love, and you love to tell the story with conviction and tenderness as you sing with soulfulness in your voices. When you make very goofy peace symbols to one another during the passing of the peace, you show even the Spock sign. How is that? Like this? <laughs> and you squeeze in some laughter into the sacred space because you know Jesus liked to have fun. You know Jesus liked to laugh. And this is part of the peace of Christ. When you stand at the pulpit and you read Holy Scripture, every age, from children to seniors, I can tell, the pastor can tell, that you put prayer into what you're reading. You're not just winging it. The words of the page come alive through your spirit. And here's a little secret that I'll share with you. I am humbled when I get to invite you into a moment of silence during our prayer of confession. When you offer your private confessions to God, it gets me every time when I look up, ready to see the words of assurance. And guess what I see? I see you're all still praying. I let the silence linger some more before I break it with my words. It's like the air is thick with angels in the silence. I can feel it. Your earnest faces, your eyes closed, praying hard, so humble, your light breaks through. I see the light of love break through when you are sweating it out behind a church table in the village square. And lots of people come to our table because, like Reverend Jarrell said, we matter. We matter, and, and we know they matter. And we matter together. And people come and they pray on our, on our trees. And I see they're standing, welcoming them with kindness. And I get a lump in my throat of admiration when I see the light in your words and smile as you greet others on the street. I'm so proud of you. I see hope, love, and light when you bring your five dollars to the offering plate and you put your hand up with all five fingers and show me how happy you are to make an offering. I see the light when kids come racing up the stairs from church school to show us their arts and crafts. When they ask the smartest questions, when they give the wisest answers, and we all take our collective breaths in this sanctuary with our eyes wide open and surprised. Wow, did you hear what that child or youth just said? I see the light when you scoop and scoop and then scoop some more strawberries at our fair. Or you schlep tables up the stairs, or you bag and bag baked goods or in the, for another fair, and you nurture so many with your hospitality, and you love doing that. When you're open to conversation at the thrift store and a stranger in need of some cheap clothing and sometimes free, when that stranger quickly becomes a friend. When you bring in boxes full of gifts for Operation Christmas Child, when you bless with your blessing hands, and you've done that so many times in this church, when you hand out water to veterans at the parade or stock up on the shelves in the food pantry with soup cans and non-perishables you've collected from the church with the youth, when you refused to lose hope during a pandemic that was just so frozen and isolating and gripping. You refused to lose hope. And you offered connection in any way you could. And we did it on Zoom. We had coffee hour on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. 
You were always a sanctuary in time of such isolation. When you pass your candlelight at Christmas to one another, when you fill the little chapel during coffee hour with loud voices and children doing calisthenics and laughter and the smell of fresh coffee, when you stand in the freezing cold at Gillette Stadium in our little Italian sausage stand, where a few of our members are this, this Sunday morning, and you serve beer for God <laughs> to very rambunctious customers. It's so cold, and your little fingers are sticking out of their gloves, and you can see the beer freezing on the counters as soon as it, it, it flows. Or you're in the sweltering heat serving hundreds of hot bratwurst and sausage sandwiches and the steam is coming up into your face and you still serve and smile at the customers all to raise money for the church and our ministries. I see the light shine through you. When you look at these windows, friends, remember the light shines through these angels, these women disciples. But so does the light shine through you. So get out there and keep shining. Keep loving. And let us pray.